Hey everybody and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to take a look at using HTML snippets and abbreviations with Emmet in Visual Studio Code. Alright, so I want to start by just giving you guys uh, a quick explanation of what Emmet is. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, I've done, uh, I've mentioned Emmet and I've kind of talked about some of the basic uh, abbreviations that you can use to really speed up your HTML development process. But I want to give you guys a little more specifics on how it works and the things that you can do so you really have an idea of how powerful it is. So Emmet is really an abbreviation and snippet extension. So by default, it supports lots of these different languages, uh, HTML, Jade, uh, let's see, CSS, SAS, Less, Stylus, Handlebars, PHP, lots of these different languages that we can go in and use these abbreviations and snippets to create real code. So we'll do a short code to expand and create real HTML or CSS, and it's gonna save us a ton, a ton of time. So you can see here in the, in the GIF here, you can see that it's, uh, it's little short codes to go ahead and generate, and once we press enter, it'll come out and generate the actual code here. Uh, and this is what we wanna take advantage of. So let's go ahead and dive in to uh, Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna pop open, pop that open. And I've got a little cheat sheet here just to remember uh, what we're really talking about to make sure I cover all the things that I want to. So I wanna start with, uh, let's say if we were to generate an H1 tag, we would have to open a tag, type H1, close it, and then my uh, extensions has an automated closing tag, so I don't have to write that out myself, but I have to manually write out the first one. With Emmet, we can just type H1 and then tab or enter, and now we get an H1 open close tag. Uh, same thing with, let's say, a div. Uh, we could do an H3, we could do a paragraph, we could do an anchor tag, all these different things just type the actual tag and then uh, a tab or an enter will go ahead and generate that code. All right, so that's the, that's the simplest aspect. Now we can start tacking on uh, classes and IDs to these tags as we do them in these snippets. So let's say we want a div with a class of container. Well, we can just type in div and then dot and then class name and then go ahead and tab over and we get that. Now another thing to know is uh, div is kind of implicit. So if I just typed dot, container without manually saying or explicitly declaring I want a div uh, and just do a tab there, I'm gonna get the same thing. So a div with a class of container. So this is something that I use all the time with, uh, with Bootstrap specifically, but a lot of other CSS frameworks have uh, the idea of the container that gives you some padding on the left and right. And this is a super easy way to generate uh, the container div. So a couple of other ones here, we could do a paragraph with a class of text center tab that over, and this will should have been text if I would have spelled it correct. Uh, and then there's uh, H1 that you could do, same thing, uh, text center, and you, you uh, can go ahead and put in some code there. So you can all, also do this with uh, ID, so div uh, with an ID of main container, let's say. All right, so we do a tab out there. And the same thing from uh, not having to manually uh, specify div, you can uh, just do a hashtag or a pound symbol and then type in main container and you'll get the same thing. You can also do, uh, so along the same lines, you can do your H1 and then give it an ID of main header, let's say, all right? So then you can you can also start to chain these together. So if I want a uh, an H1 with a class of text center and then an ID of main header, I can start typing these things together or concatenate, concatenating them together, so I've got a class and an ID. I could do uh, a div with a, uh, let's say a class of container, and then uh, let's say a class of full width for whatever reason. Uh, so you can start chaining on classes to each other. Uh, you wouldn't really do this with IDs because you'll just have one ID per element, but you can start tacking on multiple classes uh, to one element. All right, so that's gonna get us through the, uh, the IDs and classes. Then we can get into uh, multiplier. So let's say I wanted three list items inside of an unordered list. I would have to come in, type li, and that's shorter than what you would have before, li and li. But there's also the way to do multiplier. So li times three will give us three of these. Then we can get really crazy and do li times 100. That'll get all of these generated for us. I'm gonna undo that, save, a, save us some space. But you get the idea of multipliers. Now this gets really powerful when you get into children elements, child elements. So if I type a UL and I want a child of list item, 
I could do uh, the angle bracket here, uh, just like you would you would see in CSS. So a child of li. So this was a, an unordered list with one li element. I could also combine this with my multiplication to say, hey, I want an unordered list with five list items, and that'll go ahead and stub out those for me. And you could do that with any kind of uh, any kind of multi multiplier that you're looking for. So another another cool thing that you could do is uh, let's say you did an unordered list and you wanted a uh, the same scenario where you wanted five list items as the child so we've got uh, an unordered list where we want to get five list items and let's say we want each of them to have an ID of item and then whatever number index they are in this so item one item two item three item four uh, we can use the dollar sign character and this will go ahead and basically it's it represents the index that you're on so now we've got uh, ID item one item two item three item four item five so you can start getting creative that, with that. You can use the kind of the index in your class names and your IDs, uh, the text that it spits out, stuff like that. So we've talked about uh, children attributes or children uh, selectors, I guess. We can also come in and do siblings. So let's say we have let's say we have our form with a child of input, and then we want to have a second input. We don't really, really want to do uh, multiplier because we're going to do these a little bit differently. Let's say. So a sibling is just a plus. So form input plus input will give us a form. And it seems like when I do the, the plus here with siblings, it gets the um, the syntax is a little, or the spacing is a little bit off. But that's how we could do, um, that's how we could do our, our two inputs inside of a form. We could also do, let's say a div with an H1 and a paragraph tag. Uh, so that would be kind of a common thing. Oh, I think I typed that wrong. H1, not class, but uh, child. There we go. Uh, so this would be kind of a common thing for a section on a website. Usually, uh, and you can actually come in here and we could do a section with an H1 and a P. So this would be uh, basically your header for that section and then the text for that section. And you could do it a little bit more and do uh, a button somewhere as well. So you could have like a kind of a call out to, hey, click me to come do this, whatever it is. So let's look at our, uh, our form example again. So let's say we want to have a div uh, and we want to have a form inside of that div and we also want to have a p tag inside of that div. Well this works if we do kind of combining some of the stuff that we talked about so far but what if we want to also put stuff inside of this form as we go. So if we want to have form with a child of uh, input and another uh, child of input there uh, how do we get this P to not be inside of, not be a sibling of these two inputs, but to be a sibling of the form? Well, this is where we can start to use groups, where we can group the form here with its children into its own group, and then the P here uh, will be kind of outside of that as a child of div and a sibling to the form. And uh, if you notice here, we're not getting the IntelliSense when we've already typed out stuff and we backtracked. So when I type P again, uh, it'll it'll give me the the emit abbreviation here. I can go ahead and do do a tab. And again, it looks like some of my sibling stuff is uh, getting a little off. I'm not really sure why that is, but this is what we would want here. And we could do uh, a little bit more here if we talk about some of the specific kinds of inputs we have. So let's go back just a tad, and let's say we want an input of text plus an input of password. All right, so this is think about um, think about like a login form, and then an input of submit, so a submit button, and uh, and some sort of text here, the p whatever it is. Um, and this could say or register here or something, whatever it is. All right, so we'll tab out now. We get a complete, basically a login form that has a text, password, and submit, and we can take this even further by specifying. Uh, custom attributes on each of these inputs. So a custom attribute will do the, the bracket and then we'll say name equals uh, username, close out that bracket, and then we'll come into the password and do the same thing but for name equals password. All right, and then the input, we can set the value to input. Uh, value will be log in. All right, so let's come to the end and retype our last character and tab it out. So now we've got basically a complete login form. We've got a username, a password, a login button, uh, and we could set the IDs and do other custom attributes and stuff too, but we've pretty much got what we want. This is pretty handy. All right, and one of the last things we're gonna take a look at is actually specifying text. So if we do a P tag, we can specify our text through the open and close curly braces and say this is our text and close it off and tab over and there it is. Same thing with a header. 
uh, h1 this is our h1 and then we'll have to retype that character and tab over and now we get uh, being able to define our text right in our snippet and then a couple of a couple of extra ones for you guys to know as we kind of wrap up here I'm gonna select all this and then uh, delete it uh, the bang character the exclamation if you just do that on a tab will give you an HTML5 document template so this will go ahead and generate the entire thing that you need for an HTML5 document which is pretty sweet uh, and then you can come in you can do a link with uh, specifically CSS and it'll come in and say style I usually call it style so I just add an s there and then a script tag with a source property and the source will be app.js so this is the skeleton that I use for all of my just basic sample stuff sample demos that just have an HTML file a style and a, and a JavaScript file and I can generate those with with basically basically three different lines there's the bang character and then there's the uh, link CSS and then there's the script source so those those three lines really give me the structure that I need for uh, for all of the the starter HTML templates that I use in my demos so I'm gonna backtrack out of here all right so that's gonna that's gonna do it with the, the demos here I think it's really important that you guys you practice using these snippets I, I, I swear to you they're gonna save you a ton of time they're gonna make you a lot more efficient they're gonna they're gonna make generating HTML code a lot faster a lot simpler uh, and really a lot cleaner and so I want to leave a couple of resources here one is the page we started with it's just the docs on Visual Studio and I don't know if I specified this but Emmet is built right into Visual Studio code there's no extension required on some other editors you're gonna to need to get an extension that's not the case here it's built right into Visual Studio code as soon as you download it you're ready to go and then a couple of other uh, a couple of other files here from the docs from the Emmet docs one is the syntax so they kind of walk you through a lot of the stuff that I just did and then a cheat sheet which is even more thorough this kind of goes through with every combination of things that you can add and it's just an incredible amount of stuff so I hope you guys I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope you take it seriously and practice it and really see the benefits if you enjoyed the video like subscribe uh, leave a comment find me on Twitter reach out at James Q quick I would love to hear from you but in the meantime I will see you guys in the next video